Tech Amroff has written a memoir called Capital Punishment, The Hard Truth About Washington Corruption from America's Most Notorious Lobbyist. He joins us this morning. Uh, good to have you here with us. Talk about with us in person. Uh, Jeff just asked you what it was like watching <laughs> yourself on 60 Minutes. What kind of a reaction have you had to that? Because some people are hearing this from you now for the first time, and, and it probably doesn't sit well. No, actually, the reaction's been amazing. I've gotten hundreds of emails and Facebook messages from strangers and friends, uh, very positive that they appreciate that I'm honest and open and not uh, dissembling and trying mm -hmm. to hide what, uh, what happened, uh, and that I'm now facing the system and trying to do something about it. Watching last night, I, I know you're, you, you regret what you did at this point, but it almost seemed at times gleeful when you were talking about, um, about what you got away with. Um, right now, how much that you got away with can people still get away with? Well, uh, I think that the system is, they tinkered with it a little bit. They often will reform it by doing minor uh, things and patting each other on the back. But uh, virtually everything that I did, people are still doing. And uh, they kept doing even the night I was indicted and the night I, I pled. Uh, in fact, the night I was sentenced, they had fundraisers uh, along those same lines that I, that I was doing. So I think it's still going. So essentially nothing's changed. Do you, think, do you think it ever will? I mean, fundamentally change? I know you have some ideas. Putting right, them in place is a different right. story, obviously. I think that's up to the American people. Um, at some point, I think one sees with the Tea Party and with the uh, um, Occupy Wall Street and other movements, uh, people are just frustrated and fed up with all this. And uh, at some point, that will become a movement that will overthrow what's going on and, and, and stop it. So your biggest point right now is that people who enter public service should then, after they leave public service, leave Washington, leave public service for good, not, not go into the, the lobbying game. Well, I, I, th I think one of the two things that I'm saying need to be done to really stop this is to end the revolving door. If you come to serve the public, serve the public, then either go home or continue to serve the public, mm -hmm. by the way, in some other function. But but to go and, and cash that in, as, as 90% want to do, I think that's part of the problem in the system. Um, you're, you're still a fairly religious man, correct? Mm -hmm. you're, you're a devout man. And, and a lot of people look at that and say, if this is really what you believe, and this is how you want to live your life, ethically, morally, it would seem to contradict a person's faith to be doing the things that you did. Mm -hmm. So how did you do that and tell yourself it was okay? Well, and then I'm still, I'm still yeah. you know, a good person in that sense. Well, when one is deeply in a system, uh, it's sometimes difficult to see where you're at. You know, when you start a voyage, if your compass is off by a one degree, uh, and you think you're on the right path. By the end of the voyage, you're on another continent. And I think that's what happened with me. Uh, I started off a voyage and started out, set out to do good things, and I got off path and, but, and didn't, when didn't did you, realize but it. But when did you realize that you were off not, path? Not did you realize? Uh, no, not until, not until I was hit on the head by a two by four and my career was ended did I ever stop to think about it. And by the way, if I hadn't had that happen, I'd probably be doing it today. You're, you're how much in debt now? Uh, I can't even count that high, Millions. but I have a, I have a you know a forty-four million dollar restitution order to start with, and uh, and then on top of that as well. Um, some of the stuff that's interesting on the back of the book, instead of praise, like most people who have um, things like Jack Abramoff, he's scum, quotes about you. Uh, in a profession of such rock bottom standards, to distinguish yourself as unethical requires villainy on a truly epic scale. Bad. Are you trying to get a little sympathy with these? No. Or what was it thinking no, there? Uh, the, you know, the publisher wanted me to come up with uh, praise, so that's the best I think I could come up with. No, the, uh, those, uh, uh, I, I thought it was more clever, frankly, and interesting for a reader to sort of see those comments. One is often looks at the back of the book, sees, oh, fantastic book, et cetera. I think those are a little more shocking. And very, very quickly before we go, I have to mm -hmm. know, you, you have five kids. What, what do your kids think about all this? Well, I mean, obviously, my children have suffered tremendously. Uh, they were in their teenage years when all this was happening, and it's been very difficult for them them and they cope as best as they can and my wife and I thank God and the kids are very close and we do our best to, to bring them through it. Jack Abramoff, thank you for joining us this morning. Appreciate it. Pleasure.